This year alone, more than 360,000 people will be diagnosed with breast cancer, while many will die of it without being diagnosed at all. And yet, if it's caught early, the five-year relative survival rate of breast cancer is an incredible 99%. This month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and with me to discuss the progress in fighting the disease and what more can be done is Dr. Ines Vaz Luis, uh, who is an oncologist and an international specialist. Thank you very much for speaking to us on France 24. I want to start by asking you, how easy then is it these days to detect breast cancer? So uh, nowadays we have screening programs that allow us to catch up this disease at early stages. And as you, as you mentioned, uh, when we diagnose the disease early, the chances of cure the disease is very high. So we have public screening programs, and we are now trying to move towards personalized screening. So there is an important research program uh, called MyPABS, a European program, that will try to personalize the way we do this diagnosis. Okay, and what can explain the shortfalls in the detection? I mean, this probably varies depending on uh, where people live and if they regularly see their doctor. Where are any of these shortfalls and problems coming from? I think we, as a society, we all have to have moments like this where we raise awareness how important it is to have health behaviours that include um, behavioural uh, actions, but also include, include this awareness of go and screen yourself, follow your uh, primary care recommendation and the, pu the public screening programs. So I think it's moments like this that can help us to reach all the population. But we do know that there are disp disparities and there are parts of the population that we have to work close closer so they benefit for all the advances that we have so far. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about those advances? So I think it has been an amazing ride, the oncology ride in the last decades. So we advance in terms of screening, as you just mentioned, but I think we are going to further advance. But we also advance in terms of therapeutics. So we had dozens, uh, uh, hundreds of new drugs that are approved and that allow us to, um, uh, to better treat our patients. But since I am a quality of life researcher, I also have to mention that we are trying to advance in terms of how to assist our patients and improve their quality of life because cancer and cancer treatments come with impact in quality of life. And so there is also this important field of research that is trying to make a more personalized, a more proactive care pathway. Um, so I would say there are these three pillars. We advance in screening, we advance in new drugs, now we are able to do more target drugs, and we also advance in the way we care about patients, not only about the tumor, but the whole package. And that's very important, and I wanted to ask if you could tell us more about that side of things. Um, how exactly do you try to improve women's quality of life both during and, and after cancer? So we do know that about 50% of women after a, cancer, a breast cancer experience will have their quality of life severely impacted. So the first thing is since the diagnosis, try to identify who are these uh, patients. So we do have research that now is able to have algorithms since the diagnosis where you, you put the characteristics of the patients and you can flag the patients that will struggle more. And then we have to have care pathways that help the patient to mitigate the side, the, the side effects and the sequela. And these pathways are a combination of in-person actions, but also programs that can leverage on digital uh, programs remote monitoring, digital therapeutics. So it's a question of create personalized pathways, empower patients, and provide care pathways that reach everyone. 
And uh, what about chemotherapy? Is there something that you were working on at the moment, uh, trying to determine uh, if certain patients absolutely need chemotherapy or whether others can go without? Yeah, so there, there has been a lot of research in the last few years that allow us to personalize, using genomic testing, the use of chemotherapy. And we currently were invited by the European Union to launch a global trial, 5,000 young women, where we are going to try to, uh, to, to discolate chemotherapy in some of our young women using genomic testing to allow us to safely dose. So, so we, we were invited by the European Union to, 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 to launch this trial, to receive funding from this trial, and hopefully in 2025 we'll launch this uh, uh, this clinical trial. How do you feel uh, the women in France are receptive to um, alternative therapies to chemotherapy? So, in fact, there is in the French society a lot of culture that patients try to read, try to find alternatives to traditional uh, medicine. And I think what is important is to show what, what are the fields that we have evidence and push the pa patients to embrace the evidence that will allow us to have more outcomes, respecting the cultural environment and listening to the, the, the wishes of the patients. And, and, and lastly, I'd like to, to ask if you have any advice for people who may be worried about themselves or, or loved ones um, who think they might be at risk. So I think what is important first, we are in October, so I think it's important must to raise awareness, follow your screening program, don't miss your screening appointment, that's the first thing. And the other thing, engage in health behavior. So overall cancer and breast cancer, there are um, um, health behaviors that we can engage, maintain weight, physical activity, that all can contribute to better outcomes, better outcomes in terms of having the disease and better outcomes after having the disease. All right, Inez uh, Vas-Louis, thank you so much for your you. uh, insight today on France 24.